Okay, everybody, we're going to take a look at quadratics um, a little bit more today. So earlier we did factoring, and today we're going to take a look at another form where we can find the solutions of a quadratic or the x-intercepts using quadratic formula. But first I want to do a tiny little recap of vertex form from last year as well. Um, so vertex form, this is the format of a quadratic in vertex form. There are three forms. There's standard form, which is like your expanded form. There's vertex form, and then there's factored form. So this is vertex form, and it is titled rightfully so because it will show us the vertex of the quadratic, and that's found at HK. Okay, remembering that we have to switch the sign of the term in the brackets there. So if we were to use that on our quadratic here and we wanted to state the vertex, what do you think the vertex might be? Okay, I'll give you a second to think about that. So we'll take this as our x coordinate. We want to flip the sign and then this as our y coordinate. That sign stays the same. So there's our vertex. Just as a, uh, as a recap, so if I have one five, that's the vertex there. Either my quadratic will be opening up from there or down from there, but it's like the peak. It's kind of like the peak or the very bottom of a valley, um, depending on which way we open. So I know I have a vertex at 1, 5. Axis of symmetry. This is the line over which the quadratic is symmetrical. So if I have a quadratic here, my axis of symmetry will sort of mirror both sides of my quadratic like so. So the axis of symmetry, as we can see here, it cuts through the vertex of the quadratic and it will cut through a specific x value and all the x values on this line will be the same. So if this cuts through, let's say, negative 7, all of the x values along this green line are negative 7. So we call this line x equals negative 7. So in this case, our vertex cuts through 1. So I know the axis of symmetry has to also cut through that. So it must be x equals 1. That's the equation of that line. So any vertical line is always x equals the x coordinate that the vertex cut, cuts through. All right, next part, direction of opening. Okay, there's a special part of this vertex form that will tell us information about the direction of opening. And it's this value right here. Okay, and we don't really care what the number is, but whether it's positive or negative, that will tell us whether it opens up or down. So if it's negative, I want you to think about what direction it opens. Okay, it should open down if it's negative. So something like this. Okay, and then the last part is y-intercept. So anywhere on the y-axis has an x value of zero. Okay, anywhere on the y-axis has an x value of zero. So here, this is the point zero, 01, zero, 02, zero, 03, zero, 04, and so on. Um, I don't know exactly where this quadratic cuts through, but I do know that if I want to find the y-intercept, x is 0. So I'm actually just going to plug in x is 0 to find my y-intercept here. And then all I need to do is just do bed mass. So I'll start with negative 1 squared. That's just 1. And then I have negative 5 plus 5. That will give me 0. So the y-intercept of this is actually at the point zero, zero, crosses the origin. So I guess I actually drew this slightly incorrectly because it should be sort of coming through like this, right on zero, zero. Okay, so that's just a little quick recap of vertex form. It will show us the vertex, gives us information about um, some properties of the uh, quadratic as well. Um, now I want to go into what we do if we can't factor. So in the first part of today, we talked all about factoring and how we get into factored form. But what if I can't factor and I want to find the x-intercepts of a quadratic? That's what the quadratic formula is for. And you guys will probably remember this from last year. It's this big 
formula looks like this. Okay, probably remember this from grade 10 last year, hopefully. If not, we're reviewing it now, so that's okay. And the discriminant, the discriminant is a special part of the quadratic and it's the part underneath the root here. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. And the discriminant tells us information about how many x-intercepts we have. So in quadratics, we can have two x-intercepts, we can have one, or we can have zero. So if b squared minus 4ac is bigger than zero, so in other words, it's positive, this will tell us we have two x-intercepts or two, we call them roots. That's just another name for x-intercepts. Okay, so this means positive. If it is equal to zero, this b squared minus 4ac part, that means we have one root or one x-intercept. Okay, and then if it's smaller than zero or less than zero, in other words, this means negative, then that's going to tell us that we have zero roots. So no x-intercepts in that case. Okay, so this would be a case like where we have a quadratic that's sort of like opening down underneath the x-axis, so it's never going to cross, or like opening up above the x-axis like that. Okay, another thing that we do when we use quadratic formula is we make sure that when we're in standard form, one side of the equation is always set equal to zero, and that's because if I want to solve for the x-intercepts, I know anywhere on the x-axis along here, y will be equal to zero. So all of these points, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero, they all have y's that are equal to zero. So we set our equation equal to zero to find the x's where the y's are zero. That's the idea, okay? So make sure you move everything to one side um, if you don't have zero there, or if you have a y, you sub in zero there. Okay, don't worry about this for right now. All right, so let's use the quadratic formula to solve. We're in standard form right now. We're going to identify A, B, C. So take a second to fill those in. Okay, should be 3, 10, and 8. And then we're going to plug into quadratic formula. So I'll rewrite it one time here. For the rest of our questions, I'm just going to sub right in, um, but we'll write it together. Okay, make sure you write this all over, so long line here, all over 2a. And then let's plug in. So we're going to have negative 10, that's b plus or minus 10 squared minus 4ac. So 4 times 3 times 8. Root should go over this entire thing. And then all over, big long line there, 2a. Okay, let's take a second to just simplify here before we do anything in our calculators. Um, I want to know what this is. So if you wanted to do this in two parts, you could do this in two parts, or you can literally just plug this in exactly as you see it into your calculator. This is 100, 10 squared, so that should be 100 minus 12 times 8, which is 96, I believe. Just want to make sure. All right, so 100 minus 96 will give us root 4, and 2 times 3 will give us 6. Okay, if you want to write this in two steps, if you want to calculate this, 100, and then calculate this, 96, and then we do 100 minus 96, you can write that in two steps if you'd like. You don't need to, though. Okay, going up here. Um, the square root of 4, this just so happens to be what we call a perfect square, which means when I square root it, I don't get decimals. So we could actually calculate that one. It's 2 square root of 4. And then we're going to split this into two options here. Option 1, we're going to do as the plus option. So negative 10 plus 2 over 6. And then option 2, I, I call this x2, is negative 10 minus 2 over six, so that will be the minus option. Okay, these right here, 
These are called subscripts. So they should not be exponents. They're not going to be up in, up in these corners like this. They're in the lower corner, so almost like the reverse of an exponent. And they just indicate like x-intercept number one and x-intercept number two. Okay, so our first x-intercept, negative 10 plus 2, that's negative 8 over 6. Sorry, my cat wants to be involved in this math video. <laughs> and then we're going to reduce. So reduce the top and bottom by 2, negative 4 over 3. Okay, this guy over here, this one's a little bit easier. This will be negative 12 over 6, and that will give us a whole number. That's just negative 2. Okay, if I wanted to write these as like x, y coordinates, we would write this as like negative 4 over 3, 0. And we can write this as negative 2, 0, right? Because our y is 0 to solve for this. Okay, so those are the actual x, y coordinates that would be on the graph. All right, so let's try another one. Got a couple more steps in here as well. So here's our quadratic. And we want to first predict using the discriminant how many x-intercepts we expect to get from this. Then we will do a little bit more work. We'll get some x-intercepts, find the axis of symmetry and the vertex, and then sketch it. So we're going to start with a prediction. Starting with a prediction is pretty nice because if I happen to have zero x-intercepts, then I've just saved myself a lot of work from plugging into quadratic formula. I don't even have to do that, right? Um, so that's why we like to do a quick prediction. So I'm going to use that discriminant that we talked about above, b squared minus 4ac. Here's our a, our b, and our c. So let's plug them in. Make sure you keep the signs with these. So like for a and c, we're going to make sure we put them in as negatives. And then I'm getting 64. And when you multiply this, guys, it's a negative times a negative times a negative. So that should actually give us a negative, because three negatives multiplied together give us negative. So that's 20 times 3, so that should be 60, so minus 60. We're actually getting 4 here. So because this is bigger than 0, it's positive. 4 is greater than 0, therefore we have two roots. Okay, so all I'm really concerned with in this, in this case here is, is it positive, is it zero, or is it negative? Okay, so that's these that we talked about above, right? Positive, zero, or negative. All right, let's find the x-intercepts. So I would typically always be checking uh, if I can factor. Um, in this case, we're going to use quadratic formula just because that's what we're practicing with. But usually if I can factor, I will factor first um, rather than using quadratic formula. Um, okay, so we have our ABC. Let's plug into the quadratic formula. I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm just going to plug in like right away here. So this is negative B plus or minus B squared. Um, well, actually, you know what? We don't even have to rewrite this because we have already written it up here. So no need to recalculate this. We're just going to plug in the discriminant right in here. We've already calculated that part, right? Okay, that's this part of the quadratic formula. And we've already done that. So no need to calculate again. We don't want to make more work for ourselves. Times 2a. Okay, right, and this one also just so happens to be 4. So we're going to simplify that to 2. And then we'll split into our two options here. So x option number one will be the plus option. And x option number two will be the minus option. Okay, so negative 6 over negative 10, that's going to reduce both by 2. And we'll get 3 over 5. This one's easy. This is negative 10 over negative 10. That should just give us 1. So here's our x-intercepts, 1 and 3 over 5. We might need to know, like, 
kind of what this is as a decimal because we want to place it over on the x-axis here. So if you want to do 3 over 5 on your calculator just to kind of get an idea, it's 0 0.6. So that's where we'll place that on the x-axis when we go to graph. Okay, next part here is we want to find the vertex um, and the axis of symmetry, so C and D. Um, so let's start with axis of symmetry. There's a little formula for axis of symmetry. Well, there's actually two formulas. If I'm in standard form, one option is, is I could do negative B over 2A, and that's just taking right from here. The other option is, is if I'm not in standard form, let's say I'm in factored form, I can do R plus S over 2, which is basically the two x-intercepts added together and divided by 2. So I could add 0 0.6 and 1, and then divide by 2. Okay, so whichever option, you can choose whatever you want, um, and then calculate. I'm going to do negative B over 2A, maybe just in case I got these incorrect. That could work. So let's do negative 8 over 2 times negative 5. Okay, we can do this one as a decimal. If you, if you want to leave it as a fraction, you can, um, but we're going to have to plot it anyways on the graph, so I think it makes sense to just do this as a decimal. And we should get positive 0 0.8. So this is the axis of symmetry. It's also the x-coordinate of the vertex. So if I know the x-coordinate of the vertex, I should easily be able to find the y because I have the equation of what y is equal to. Right, so y is equal to something when x is 0 0.8, and I want to know what that something is, so I'm going to plug it right into the equation, plug in 0 0.8. And then uh, everyone should be following along with their calculators here. If you don't have your calculator out, make sure you grab that out. Hopefully you've already been doing that. Okay, I'm just calculating on mine as well. You guys make sure you get the same thing as me. I got 0 0.2. Okay, so final vertex coordinates here are 0 0.8, that's the x, and the y is 0 0.2. Okay, so here's our important information. We're gonna graph this. We're going to graph these x-intercepts, and we'll graph our axis of symmetry, which is x equals 0 0.8. So as far as scale over on our graph here, we might want to do like, uh, we have to go up to 1. So maybe we'll do, we'll go by 0 0.1s. So this will be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and so on. So maybe I'll just label every other so we don't get um, don't have too many numbers in here. So 0 0.2, 0 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. And same thing, let's do the same thing for the y's. Okay, so plotting our x-intercepts, 0 0.6 and 1. And then I have a vertex at 0 0.8, 0 0.2. So that should be here. And I have an axis of symmetry that cuts right through that at 0 0.8. And my parabola should be symmetrical on both sides here. So just try to make it as symmetrical as you can. Okay, and there's our quadratic. We can label this as x equals 0 0.8. That's the equation of the line there. Okay, um, just for your future self, if you're looking back at your notes, uh, this is x of the vertex, as well as the axis of symmetry. So you can make yourself a little note there. All right, what will you find if there are no roots? So this is our last little part and then you guys will have some time to work. What will we find if there's no roots? So 
let's suppose maybe I didn't do a prediction here. Maybe I did like, I just went right away and I set this equal to zero and I identified A, B, C. So here A is one. Remember, if we don't see something in front of an X squared, it's a one or an X. Okay, imaginary coefficient of one there. Our B is negative six, our C is 11. Let's say we plug this right into quadratic formula now. So we do negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so I plugged into quadratic formula. I start simplifying, right? So negative and negative, that makes positive. And negative 6 squared, that's 36. 4 times 11, and I've got a negative in front there, so negative 44. 2 times 1, 2. All right. Here's where we would maybe start to see an issue. So this is where we are going to simplify what's underneath this root here. 36 minus 44. I can already tell there's going to be a problem here because I'm going to get a negative. And that's going to be an issue because I can't square root a negative. So we get negative 8 here. And you can try in your calculator if you want. If I try to square root negative 8, I'm going to get an error on my calculator. And the reason for that is, is that a square root, when I say square root of 16, really what I'm saying is what squared equals 16? Well, I know there's two things that I can square to get 16. I can square 4, or I can square negative 4. But what if I had a negative 16 underneath here? What can I square to get a negative? Ooh, I actually can't square anything to get a negative, because anything multiplied twice is going to give me a positive, right? Positive times positive, or negative times negative always gives me a positive. So... I can't square root a negative. That's why when the discriminant is zero, we have no roots. So this should tell me right away, b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. Therefore, we would say no roots. So that's why sometimes a prediction, if we do a prediction of what is b squared minus 4ac, first, it saves me from having to do some of this simplification work. Okay? Um, if by chance, this is the last thing, if by chance this happens not to be a whole number, okay, we're going to just do a little practice right together here before we're done. Um, let's say I plugged into my quadratic formula, and maybe I got something like this, but it was like positive 8. So let's just say we had this. Okay, I want to practice this on our calculators. Let's say we had 6 plus or minus root 8 over 2. And then I split it into two options, right? One of them was the plus option. So let's just try that. What I want you to try is I want you to try plugging this all into your calculator all together. This will save us from having to round decimals all the way down. The more I round, the more my final answer will be off. So if we plug this all into our calculator at once, one thing that I want you to be mindful of is you're actually going to create brackets around the top so that when we divide by 2, the whole top is divided by 2. So I want everybody to plug this into their calculators together just as a practice. This is how you're going to calculate if the square root happens not to be um, a perfect square, Okay, if the square root is a decimal. Some of your calculators might open a bracket right here. I want to make I want you to make sure you square that but also finish that bracket there as well. Okay, so finish both brackets. Sorry, I think I said I want I want you to make sure you square that. I want you to make sure you close that. That's what I meant. And then also close that bracket, okay? You can press equals on your calculator or you can literally just go in and divide by 2. Okay? So if you press equal on your calculator, then you just divide that by 2, or you can just put this whole thing into your calculator all at once. Um, you should get, if you've done this correctly, you should get about 4.414. Okay? If you're having any trouble with this, 
ask a friend to help you out um, to make sure that you're doing this correctly in your calculator. It's probably a bracketing issue if you're not getting this answer. So make sure you have those brackets and make sure if your calculator opened a bracket on this side that you've also closed it on this side. All right. Um, you guys can try the minus one as well. So if we did this for x2, it would be six minus root eight. So if I do this correctly, make sure I put brackets around this. And if this happens to open a bracket in my calculator, I will close that bracket as well. Mine actually does that in my calculator. It opens a bracket when I type in a square root. So six minus square root eight. Close up those brackets and then divide by two. I got um, 1.58. Six. We'll round up. Okay, so that's just calculator practice. Um, that's what you're going to use on your worksheet if this happens not to be like a perfect number that will square root easily, right? It will square root to like something like a decimal. Then I want you to try to calculate that all together in your calculator. Okay? All right, guys, that's everything.